What's up guys? It's Bissy. I'm back with another SimCity Builder video and today we're going to talk about algorithm and which items to keep, sell. We're not really going to talk about the items you're going to be producing because we already have or I already have so many videos on that already. If you have not already, please hit that like and subscribe button. We are also accepting new members. I have a group rules video on that. And I'm going to leave our group code in the description below. If you are planning to be a member of our group, make sure you watch that group rules video so you know exactly how we trade and what the abbreviations mean. That being said, one of my group members asked me to do a video about algorithm, which I know I have some videos up kind of touching base on that, but also about um, how to progress in your regional maps, which I'm going to do a video on that as well. But this one, I'm going to talk about what items you guys should be keeping versus selling. Some items are more easily obtained or accessible based off of what level you are, how often you shop on the global market, and kind of what's going on in the game. So as far as algorithm, every time you guys click this global trade HQ, you see all of these here. Okay. Once you click one of these items, you're going to travel to somebody's city and you're going to see everything that they have for sale. The game has no way of knowing what I, like, if you click this item, this compass, after you click it, that changes things. The algorithm doesn't apply once you click that item because that's not how the game works. Okay. The game works based off of how many rares you see once you click this this main screen here. Once you leave this main screen, they have no way of controlling what those people are posting or what they already have posted as far as what you're going to see. This is based off of like what you see here is based off of which items you have unlocked and also the supply and demand. So you'll notice that a lot of things on global sell really quickly versus other items like burgers. They don't sell very quickly. So what ends up happening is things get don't necessarily get posted more often. It's they don't get sold as often. So people think, okay, the game's just not showing me very many melons because it doesn't want to show me melons. No, what's going on is it just doesn't have enough. So when something like that gets posted, it gets purchased almost immediately. Okay. And the, sometimes you'll go um, to a global, you'll go to a city and you'll notice how it says somebody has already purchased it. So you're like, fuck my internet's slow. That's not always the case. Now, sometimes, yes, your internet is slow, but more often than not, what's happened is someone purchased it and the game has a delay on when it takes it off the, the trade HQ. So you'll notice sometimes, let's say you're sitting in somebody's city, right? And they had, let's say you saw a camera on global. So right here, you saw the camera. This thing refreshes every 30 seconds. If you're sitting in this person's city, you travel to their city and you purchase the camera. Then you click the, glo the global trade HQ and you still see their camera for sale. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. More often than not, you'll see it for sale for 30 seconds longer. How many more people do you think clicked that camera after you had purchased it? Probably quite a few. So it's not that your internet is slow per se. It's more that the game isn't uploading as quickly as you would think it would. Now, another thing when you're farming rares, most high level people don't sell their rares. They either need them because they didn't camp low level, so they spend a good majority of their time hunting rares anyway, or they have a group or a feeder city that they would give their rares to. So they most high level people don't sell their rares. That being said, a lot of lower level people you would think would keep their rares, but they don't because they don't understand how important that they are. And they also don't understand how to make money very well. So they end up selling their rares for quick money and 
because they don't realize that they need them as badly as they do. If I were you, I would click low level items when searching for rares. It's not, you know, guarantee, but it's definitely, it ups the odds of you finding rare items. One thing that you can do is you can click this refresh and every so many refresh, you should eventually see a rare item and you can count how many refreshes that is to get a better accurate number on your algorithm. Now, for example, if you were to see, okay, see how I have a lot of mountain here? I've seen, been seeing mountain like crazy. You're also gonna wanna pay attention to what events are going on in the game and where most people are on their paths. Hang on, you guys. Okay, so a lot of you will sell very important items. Don't sell things like beef, cheese, bread rolls, cream. You, you definitely want to, first off, go watch my production video and make sure that you're making the correct items. But that you're also taking into consideration that certain items are more easily obtained on the global market. For example, TVs, refrigerators, pizza, burgers, ice cream bars, uh, cheese fries, couches, Let's see what else, suits, pink drinks, gnomes, fire pits, yogurt, all of those items you see quite a bit on the global market. The ones that you don't see are you know, paint, glue, nails, surprisingly enough, even though they're the most profitable item in the game. Um, you see quite a bit of cheesecake, not quite as much as the others. You don't hardly see any bread rolls because what ends up happening is if you're making bread rolls, you're losing money. Donuts are more profitable than bread rolls. However, a lot of people that choose to make these items are making the wrong items. So you look at the items that turn the highest profit and almost every item that I just listed that there's a lot of are the ones that don't turn a high profit. Yes, pizza turns a nice profit if you buy the beef and the cheese. So if you are selling your beef, that is not a good thing to do. You should be buying beef anytime you see it. So I'm gonna give you guys a list of items that you shouldn't be selling, the ones that you should be turning into something else. If you have cream and bread rolls, you're gonna make ice cream. If you have beef and cheese, you're gonna make pizza. Okay, I do have all this information in my production video, but I'm just going to give you guys a brief rundown of things that you should not be selling, like ever, unless it's to a club member and they asked for it because they need help. Cupboards, never sell those. Those are pretty hard to come by. You might need them for epics or VU repair. Now I call some things v VU repair items because most people launch Meteor Strike 3 um, because it costs four VU items and it gives you three, three keys. It's a four disaster repair. And a lot of times, if you're looking at your VU, it'll say easy, medium, and hard for the repair. If it's easy or medium, it, odds are it's going to ask you for things such as nails, hammers, tape measures, planks, chairs, donuts, tables, cupboards, that kind of stuff. Those are what I call VU repair items paint. So don't sell your paint. That's something. Oftentimes you'll see that I make certain things. I'm either making them for an assignment or I'm making them to stock up on my inventory so I can do an epic project. That is the only time I make the non-profitable items. So like right now I have 29 glue. I could sit here and I could make nails to make a nice profit but I know I need to do an epic soon. So I'm gonna go through and make sure that I have, you know, X amount of each item that I know that I can't find. You know, things like corn, the microwaves and backpacks, those are extremely hard to come by because they are very low profit. Um, paint is really hard to come by. Melons are pretty hard to come by, especially for you high level players. And a lot of people don't realize that they think a high level player is after 55. But what they're not understanding is between at level 18, okay, that's when you unlock groups. 
Now you have like 20 to 25 items unlocked by level 18, something like that. Between level 18 and 24, you end up with, I believe, 34 or 35 items total unlocked. Okay? 43, you unlock popcorn. That is the last item in the game that you're going to unlock, aside from when you do your regional maps. Okay? 43 is considered the high level. Okay? Because 43 is the level that you unlock the last item. Algorithm goes based off items unlocked and supply and demand. So let's say you have 50 items in total in the game and you have 25 out of those 50 unlocked. Then you have the ones that you see a majority of the time versus the ones that you see not so often. If you are between level 30 and 43, you're considered a high level player. Because once you hit level 31, that's when you're going to unlock burgers. When you unlock sugar, most of you know what I'm talking about. The moment you unlock sugar, you saw sugar all the time, huh? That's going to happen at level 31. And it's going to be with burgers. Then you're going to unlock cheese fries at some point. I can't remember what level that is. But when you unlock cheese fries, it's going to do the same thing. The biggest jump in the game is going to be leaving level 29. This is for the contest of mayors, for the algorithm, for money making, for epic projects, every aspect possible. When you leave level 29, things are going to get dramatically harder in all of those areas because you unlock Omega at level 30. That's going to add additional contest of mayors tasks. And you're going to unlock burgers at level 31, which is going to totally fuck up your algorithm, okay? And your epics. So, this is a list of items that you guys should hold. Microwaves and barbecues, definitely hold on to those. All the other items in the appliance store, TVs, bulbs, and refrigerators, those are really easy to come by. Cupboards is about the only one you need to hold on to, like, in this one, because all the other shit you can find pretty pretty easily. So couches, chairs, tables, and blue techs are able to be obtained pretty easy. Caps, you're going to be making these 24-7. So you don't really need to hold them because you can see, you see them quite a bit. However, backpacks, those are, those are probably the hardest one to come by out of this shop in general. Um, the harder one to come by for the fast food shop is going to be popcorn because it takes corn and microwaves and both of those items turn a very low profit so that's definitely going to be a very um, scarce item to find grass you do see quite a bit uh, you don't see very many lawn mowers or lawn chairs those seem to be the most rare um, at least for me and what I've noticed now I know that People don't make lawnmowers very much because it takes paint, which, you know, nobody wants to give away their paint. That's another reason why cupboards are so hard to find, because they also call for paint. Fire pits, even though they turn the least profit, they, they're on there quite a bit because people are mistaken. They usually make the items that sell for the most money, but turn the least profit. They're just tricked by the number. You know, it's like, okay, it sells for the most. I'm just going to make it, you know. So definitely hold on to your saps, your lawn mowers, your lawn chairs. All the other stuff's pretty easy to get. This one, drills and ladders are going to be prob probably the two hardest to find when it comes to your hardware store. You don't really see any of the hardware stuff too often after a... Um, at level 35 or so but I would say spatulas drills and ladders are the absolute worst to find especially for you high level players nails again I don't see nails hardly ever um, which again especially odd because they are a very profitable item to make um, planks I don't see them too often bricks I see all the time Glue and cement, again, I don't see, you know, so much, but it's definitely doable. The ones I never, ever see are paint and nails. You're going to see quite a bit of donuts. 
Um, probably the one in here that I rarely see would be bread rolls and coffee. Bread rolls, definitely. I almost never see those. Beef, I find every so often in a stack of five, and it's usually from a lower level player, like a level 30 something. Um, and I think the reason for that is because they, they think that they're going to set their shops up at night and that they want their shop to run continually throughout the night. So they fill it with beef. That is a big mistake. Again, watch my production video to know what you should be making at night in your farmer's market. I rarely see melons. Um, cream I see very, you know, every so often, but beef, melons, and corn is definitely harder to come by. And that pretty much takes care of that. I'm not even going to get involved with the sports store because that's a limited time thing. But, you know, try to, if, depending on how much storage capacity that you have, dep will depend on which items you should hold and which items you should get rid of. Try to hold on to X amount of items based on whatever it is you're doing. If you know you're going to be doing the contest of mayors, then you need to prep. You need to make sure that you have the right resources, that you have, you know, a lot of nails and hammers and stuff for when you do your VU repair. You need to stock up on your VU, all that kind of stuff. So it really depends on what it is that you're doing in the game. If you know you're going to be doing a lot of epics, then it's probably wise to make a list of items that you're getting low on and try to stock up on the harder to find items and then dump all the items that you know you can find. For example, there's no point in stocking up on a bunch of gnomes and refrigerators for an epic project when you can be holding things like cupboards and stuff. You can find that other shit on Global really easy. So algorithm, I know I have a video that talks a little bit more about it. So I'm not going to get too much into the algorithm, but basically what you're going to do, the, the tips that I have for you, if you're trying to find rares, click low level items. Okay. Like I just, just talked about, about how lower level players have, um, they're more hurting for money and things like that. If you're in a group, okay, and you travel to somebody's city, I'm going to show you guys something. Let's say that you traveled to someone's city and you're full, or you want to be able to go back to that person's city. Let's say that you're full on items. You want to run to your depot, drop some items off and go back and try to buy the rares. Let's say that you're looking at this person's city. See up here at the top where the little eye is, but next to their name, you see that little shield. That means that they're in a group. If that shield is empty, you click this little eye you click the club tab and there will be an invite button to the group, okay? You click that invite button, it's gonna pop up a their name in the chat and it's gonna say, so-and-so invited so-and-so to join the group. You're gonna rush back to your depot, dump off some items and make room, hit that chat, hit the bubble, it's gonna pop this this list up and it's gonna say, you know, that you can go back and visit that person's city. Then you can go back and buy the items that were for sale as long as you did it quickly enough to where somebody else didn't buy them. If you're in someone's depot and they have, let's say, French fries advertised and then they posted a camera afterwards, buy that French fry because it's likely that that's the only thing that they have advertised on Global and that way you're the only one sitting at their depot. Camp that person's depot. Most of the time, when a rare item sells very quickly, people will post more. They'll be like, oh shit, that sold fast. Especially the lower level players, like under 18. You'll be sitting there, and if you wait long enough and you open and close their depot, they'll just keep posting them one after another. They're probably like, holy shit, I've been selling these like crazy. you know. So just keep doing it until you either run out of space or they quit posting. That happens quite a bit. As far as anything else goes, um, that's about all the tips I have as far as farming rares. Definitely when it's the end of the contest or pay always pay attention to the in-game events. When you look at the, the, uh, the contest of Mayor's Pass, look at the rewards that you think most people are gonna be near the end of the pass 
so to speak. So, you know, just kind of pay attention as to where most people are. And then you'll see like, okay, a lot of people are going to be having, you know, beach items and VU items. So, or this bionicle garden thing here, you know, everybody got these three mountain. That explains why there's been so much mountain rares on the global market this week. Like massive amounts. Okay. Um, any of those limited time events, when the contest of mayors ends, all that stuff, you're going to notice a difference on the game. Because those items are unable to be produced, it's based totally off the game and what's going on in the game. Whereas other items, it depends on what people produce. So, for example, there's... Um, sometimes we get those events that pop up that tell you to make stuff. So you'll see this little bubble and it'll say, earn 50 Easter eggs and it'll have like, um, like one cupboard. You don't go and buy that one cupboard to get those Easter eggs. You have to make the one cupboard, collect it, and then you can go and donate it to that building. Similar to an Epic, but you're, you're getting Easter eggs or whatever, like Christmas snowflakes or something in return. You're gonna hit claim, you're gonna get X amount of eggs, and the spins cost, you know, let's say the spin is, you know, 50 eggs and you have 100, okay? So then you can spin twice. You stock up on your Easter eggs, you do your spins, and then you'll get buildings or rares or whatever the thing is offering. So if you guys see that, that's what that, it'll be like this. It'll be a bubble just like this, but it'll have like Easter eggs or whatever. And you'll have to produce the item and donate it. When those events happen, you'll notice that a lot of people will start posting like one specific item. You know, like let's say that it's having everybody, a lot of people make, you know, backpacks or whatever. You'll start to notice an overflow in backpacks. And you're like, what the fuck's going on? Oh, that's why, because there's an event, you know. During triple hotspot weeks, you'll notice that the global market is shot. Like there is nothing, dude. You go on global and there's not shit because everybody's buying shit up because they're all doing epics. Um, another thing, usually the day off from the contest, you don't see hardly any glass or electric. But during the contest, especially the first day, you'll notice that the global market's flooded with stuff like that, like glass and electrics. You know people are doing their assignments. So definitely has a lot to do with what's going on in the game. You'll also notice that you will be experiencing an overflow of one specific item or a lack of one specific item. Like let's say you're upgrading your storage, right? You'll notice that you have an obscene amount of cameras and bars, but no locks. And you'll notice when you go to your group chat and you try to trade that everybody is scarce on locks. Then all of a sudden, couple weeks go by and now everybody has an overflow of locks but a shortage of cameras the game does this all the time i recommend either trading the cameras for locks to another member or just hold them because eventually the game is going to give you the other one and then you'll be able to upgrade you know x amount of times that's what kind of makes it difficult and that's why storage space is so valuable because as you progress through the game a lot of people think that they don't need very much storage and you do okay 350 is nowhere near enough it's not enough at 825 okay by the time you add up the amount of time the amount of items you need for your rares think of it this way if you're doing the contest of mayors and you have vu i if you're a high level player especially it is highly probable that you're going to go through 100 to 150 VU items in one round of the contest as a higher level player. Then you have to take into account it costs 25 of each storage item once you near the end, right? Every five times you upgrade, it goes up by one item until it hits the maximum, which is 25, and then it's going to ask you for 25 of each item until you max out. The max storage capacity is 700. However, you get 20 extra storage space if you purchase your regional uh, depot, which is 5,000 regional coins. So that's 20 per regional map. There's five regional maps. That's going to bring you up to 800. 
Then you have your in-game, your pass, your temporary storage, which you can click your little storage unit and you will see that it says 40, plus 45 storage bo boost ends in six days, 15 hours. Okay, once that ends, I'm gonna lose 45 space. I don't have my fifth regional map unlocked, but once I do, I'll have another 20 space. Do not unlock regional maps simply for the 20 space because you're going to end up unlocking items that are gonna take up that 20 space. And it makes every other aspect of your game harder, which I am going to do some more um, videos on regionals. But as far as uh, like what you're gonna be storing, then you have your dozer. Now it is easy to focus on one, one item at a time. A lot of people, when you're a low level player, don't do that. Focus on both. It's crucial, okay? You don't ever want to pass items up on global that are rare, ever. Buy them, buy them, buy them, never sell them. Now, what you can do is you can join a group and trade with people. And that way, like what we used to do back when everybody had storage and dozer that, you know, everybody needed to unlock everything, we would have teammates pair up and we would pair up in groups and you would just give the player that you're paired up with all of that one item. So for example, me and a friend of mine, we paired up, I would give him every bit of dozer I found and he would give me all his storage. We didn't do one for one. If you're worried about somebody being dishonest or taking advantage of you, definitely make sure that you're trading one dozer for one storage, but we just did it straight across. There was times where he would have 75 pieces and I would only have 20 and then vice versa. Then once you get to, let's say you guys have a cap, like, okay, every 20 upgrades, right? We're going to switch off. And then that way you don't have all that extra shit taking up space in your storage, but you're still able to obtain a good amount of rares and get shit done. War items. These are a pain in the ass because they don't offer... You, they don't allow you to post more than five for, you know, or more than one for sale anymore. So they take up a lot of time or space in your depot. Because um, you can only, you know, post one at a time and only club members can buy them. A lot of people that do war will uh, kind of join in groups and rifle through people's depots trying to get war items. If you are looking for war items... You can always come to our group. We don't do war very often, and I normally have some war items for sale if you want to purchase them. I ask that you don't just rifle through my depot for the regular items as those are posted for my group members, but if you could be respectful and join in to buy war items, that's fine with me. Um, if you're looking for a club, we're always accepting people, and we're not a war group. We only do war for the contest of mayors, so we only expect people to attack when they have an assignment. Now. Once you accumulate, you know, enough VU and enough dozer, you're going to just add up how much of your storage is taken up by rare items. Then you have your raw materials, your factories. Between the, the raw materials and the, store and the uh, rares, it's going to take up over half your storage most of the time. So storage is definitely number one priority. I see, a, I see some people saying things like, oh, 350 is plenty. No, it's not. And what's going to happen is you're a low level. So you think that, but what's going to happen is you're going to go up in level and you're going to realize that you don't have enough space. By the time you realize that you fucked up, you're not going to find storage rares the way that you did when you were a lower level. The algorithm is going to drop so much. The last time that I actually saw some rare items was like eight months ago. I saw a stack of five dozer. And I did manage to get it in time, but like I said, it's extremely rare for high level players to get their hands on rares without spending cash. If you're somebody who wants to spend cash on rares, maybe you spend real money on the game, or maybe you have a feeder city, do not buy them singly unless you need like one, okay? A lot of people start a feeder city they accumulate cash, and they just buy storage pieces to transfer to their main city. Don't do it that way. What you should do is hold your cash 
and wait for the prom promotional bundles. They'll pop up usually at the end of the contest of mares and they'll say something like 60% off, uh, 10 of each storage for 200 cash or whatever. That is a way better deal than buying them for $25 a piece or 24 or 18 or whatever they cost. Okay. Um, always wait for those promotional bundles. I, that's how I was able to max out my storage because I really screwed up. And then I had to do feeder cities. Another problem that people have is they seem to think that feeder cities are just the, the answer to everything. Feeder cities are not the answer to everything and they're only going to get you so far. If your city is fucked up, a, cedar, a feeder city is not going to fix it. Okay, it's going to help you fund rares, but once you start buying a ton of rares on your feeder and transferring them, the game is going to recognize you as a hacker and they're going to not allow you to see your rare items for sale. Make sure that you're transferring them in groups of five and purchasing them. Do not post 50 rares at once and then try to buy them, okay? Make sure you post five, buy five, post five, buy five. That way, if you don't see them for sale, you're only out five, okay? So, um, just be careful when you post things for sale. A lot of people, they forget to click off this blue box here. This one says advertise for 12 hours. I've had several people think that when they post it for sale, the person can only see what they have advertised. That is not true. They can see everything in your depot, okay? If you click your depot and you see a little shield with a name that was purchased by that person. If you see Daniel's face, that means Daniel purchased it. If you see nothing and you just see a blank spot, that means somebody from Global purchased your item. Now, always make sure that you don't have things posted to Global when you post for group members. Another thing that you can do is when you're posting items for sale, lower the price just a little bit because people will recognize stuff out of habit. And I could come to you and say, how much is it for a shovel? And most people wouldn't remember that it's 150. However, if they saw it, they know it's the max price, right? So if you just switch it up to be like all of one number or repeat numbers like 29.29 or 50.50, okay? They know that that's not the real price. Most people don't do the math to see how much you're actually discounting it. So it could only be like 11 uh, coins, but they think they're getting a deal. So they're going to buy it to sell it for max. So you're just kind of fucking with their head a little bit. Um, a lot of people will post things for base price. This is base price. It means nothing's been up or down. Okay. If I go like this and I knock off one, that's too obvious. A lot of people see that and go, oh yeah, nice try, you know. But if you do 4898, a lot of people see that and they're like, oh, cool, a deal. Or try to do it under five, under the number five. Especially like ones. A lot of people get thrown off by the ones. The zeros, not so much. Even if you can get this second one to not be a nine, you know, just go down to eight. Four, eight, eight, eight. You're only down a couple coins, but it's making all the difference. All right. Also, decide which item you're going to advertise on Global. If you pick an item that's going to take a long time to sell, it's probably a good, a good idea to do that at night when you're not playing. That way your group members are able to um, go to and from your depot and you don't have to spend all day saying, let me know when you're here because I have shit on global, you know. Um, I would only advertise your depot with the things that sell quickly if no one in your group wants them. Okay, there are certain items that a lot of people in the group would want, especially like, okay, for example, if you're somebody who's in my group. I will always buy textiles. I don't care how many you have, I will buy them. Because a lot of you should be buying them because they go for your flower production. If you have anything that's from the barn besides veggies, I will buy it because I would rather make money with it than you sell it to somebody on Global. All I ask of the group members is do what we do. We will fill our depots and then say full depot or depot up for grabs or de open depot. And we'll let you guys rifle through it before we go global. 
Oftentimes I will post things that are for group members that I wouldn't otherwise sell. I'm doing it to help you guys. For example, if I post like two paint, I don't need the money for the two paint. I would have rather keep, I would have rather kept it. Okay. I'm posting it so that you guys, if you need it, can check my depot and that way you have a chance in hell of finding it. Cause I know you're not going to find it on global. So if you see that, don't ransack somebody's depot. Okay. If you're a member of the group, try to do the same, you know, be respectful, try to help people out. It, we do not expect you guys to give items for rare items. Um, but what I mean by that is this, if you're doing a rare trade, we trade one rare for one rare. We don't give items away usually unless we're trying to help you out and you're a good friend of ours or you've been with us a while and you've done the same. But let's say me and somebody in my group are trading one camera for one lock. Okay, that makes sense. But let's say that you ask me for two glue. I post the two glue for you and you say, I will give you another item for the two glue or a rare item. That is not necessary. We post items for you guys to help you. All we expect back is the same. There are some groups, however, that expect an item back for an item. So if somebody posts two paint for you, then they want a pick at whatever's in your depot that's not rare. Like they'll say, okay, I'll give you two ladders for two paint. We do not do that. That's ridiculous. And that would take way too much time and effort. And it's just not worth it. So if you need something, say you need something. If someone has it, they will post it for you. If they don't have it, they... They just simply say nothing. So there is no point in repeating yourself over and over and over. It's rude and it's annoying, okay? I know what you need. Everybody knows what you, you need. We see it in the chat. You don't have to say what you need every one minute, okay? If you said something that you need and the chat moved like a whole bunch and you know that a lot of people have jumped on and may not have seen it, then that's one thing. Then re remind people, be like, hey, you know, I'm still looking for that those tape measures. If anybody finds any, I could really use those two tape measures. That's fine. But if you're like, anybody have two tape? And then nobody answers. And then somebody says something, one message, and you ask again. And then two more messages, and you ask again. That's not okay. Okay? We see your message. We aren't going to acknowledge you every time you ask for something. And it's not to be rude. It's just because we have so much going on in the chat. I'm, sometimes I will acknowledge you and say, no, sorry, I don't have any, but I'll look on global for you. Oftentimes when people ask for stuff like sugar and um, text, textiles or glass, people think, well, they should be able to find that on global rel relatively easy. I can only speak for myself, but if I'm asking you for things like sugar and glass, it's because I can't find them on global. And I would like one of you lower level players to do that for me. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. But basically, you guys just um, do those tips to find rares. And if you guys need anything, have any questions or feedback, go ahead and leave it in the comments below.